this. Let's watch Vosh's video. It sounds like it might be an April Fool's video, but let's find out. Here we go. Channel let's find out. I've been let's see. Let's check it out. I want to see what Vosh has to say. Let's watch it together, everyone. Thank you so much. It's it's super pog, Socialist Potato. I, um, I didn't want to have to make this video, but in light of some realizations I've come to, I feel it would be dishonest of me not to. So, as any viewer of this channel knows, I've been arguing lately against um, people I call tankies. You know, I, it's just been a mm. recurring motif the past couple of weeks. And they've been making arguments that they never really resonated with me, but I um spur to spur. I um I opened Google Maps the other night. Listen. Listen, everybody. I've been watching Vosh a long time. I know Vosh. I know when he's being serious and when he's not. And uh, um I realized when the little dot showed up to show me where I am that I live in the West. I'm Western. And um, thank you, Gina. Uh, that just yes set or no motion, this domino effect of realizations in my head. I, I panicked. I got up. I ran to the bathroom. Thank you, Salavik. And I confirmed thank you, my Sil. worst fear, which was that I am, yes, I am white. And I'm sorry. And with these two realizations in tow, I began to reevaluate the positions that I had taken um, over the past few weeks, the past few years, and the people that I've argued with, and the statements that I've made. I've I've done a rad lib. I've I've done a neoliberal. Uh, I've done an anarchity, and I've done a Damn. no growth, and I'm here to correct the record. So, the first thing that I want to talk about is socialism. I thought that socialism was an economic and social system oriented around maximizing freedom for the individual by elevating the rights of workers and freeing them from the uh, commodification and uh, it, uh, wage slavery inherent to capitalist organization. That was my thought, but... Um, no. If that was the case, then there would actually be no socialist societies on Earth right now, uh, because no society has achieved either of those criteria, and that can't be right. True, and Vosh. I true, true. Looked and I realized. Let's take China for example. Its full name, the People's Republic of China. People. The one party that leads the entire government. It's a communist party the chinese communist yeah. party duh well, he's finally getting it why would they call it that if they weren't awakening like, vosh socialist. awakening moment you know and and i real it was the same with i thought north korea i called it uh, caffeinated heathen mel will be back in six hours i promise a, a despotic monarchy uh, watch where uh, the impoverished residents are forced to participate in a cult-like cult of personality with their hereditarily determined ruler, but Democratic's right there in the name, her PK, and Marx was big on democracy, so I don't know how I missed that. I, I, I don't know if, if it's because I'm white or... No. Or what? Um, April Fool. It really made me reevaluate. I, I, I was... When yesterday, last night, I, I was on April stream, Day, by the way. and I was going through, um, I was going through evidence of the Uyghur Muslim genocide, and um, and I didn't think about this at the time, but while we were reading declass, not declassified, sorry, leaked documents from the Chinese Party, the the Chinese Communist Party, about how they were unlawfully detaining residents of a region filled with ethnic minorities for flimsy suspicions and then throwing them in detention camps for years at a time on absolutely nothing other than the word of what is essentially a neighborhood watch program. I didn't notice. 
those party officials true devious chelster in the header of the notes they were calling each other comrade hello unity why would they do that if they i did see social? some of the research streams seems super good but, i'm gonna probably watch it on my but, own tonight and, and to and to speak of this this weaker muslim genocide i i got this all wrong when i was thinking about it i thought it was some kind of well genocide i mean you know um but now that I really take a look at the evidence and think about it, it's not really all that much. Basically, just imagine if in America, uh, after 9-11, the United States government had deployed uh, uh, hundreds of billions in surveillance equipment across the country, centering it largely on Muslim communities, uh, enlisted millions of Americans in neighborhood watch programs, and sent tens of thousands of uh, Muslims in the country to re-education centers where their contact to the outside world was cut off and they were denied any legal representation and uh, this was all being done to purge them of unclean thoughts they had in their head and ensure loyalty to the state. Wait, when you, Because I know a lot of people have Western bias. When you phrase it as something America would have done, you realize this isn't something leftists would have an issue with. The only reason people are upset about this is because it's happening in China. But if you think about like, oh, what if it was like something America that all of a sudden, you know, it all, it all yeah, melts away. I can imagine. God, I didn't even realize when I was going to You get good at research. You get, you learn this stuff in order to be a streamer. Translated. Cause I don't read Mandarin. I was reading them translated in English. Oh, <gasps> a Western language. Oof. The bias runs deep as it has for a while on this channel. I, um, I sometimes joke about having read all theory. True, true, Gina. The reason true. why I did that is um, because it was annoying to me. I thought that people would sometimes use theory uh, uh, dogmatically, like like it was religious text. They don't actually care about interpreting it or synthesizing it or analyzing it. They would just use it to bludgeon people with differing arguments. But now that I realize I was wrong, I, I, that's the right way to do it. See, if you've, if you've read Marx, especially his writings on dialectic materialism, you would know he believed that society moved forward based on an unyielding and unchanging set of ideological principles encoded yeah. in the writings that he and his fellow theorists True. took the time to inscribe for us. That's what it means, dialectical materialism. When society is affected not by influences in its material conditions, but rather by a rigid set of unchanging conditions that existed at the time that theory was written. So really, interpretation isn't needed. Interpretation is, is, is blasphemous in a way, um, which is why from now on, whenever I'm arguing with somebody, rather than engaging with their ideas or trying to sort of discuss or dismantle the principles that they've set in for their argument, I'm just going to quote uh, theory at them the way a uh, hypocritical Christian would quote Bible verses to explain why uh, gay people are bad, but it's okay for them to be racist. Um, Can I skip ahead? I'm going to skip ahead. Wanted. This bit is a little long. Something, something. <laughs> uh I haven't even showered today. <laughs> uh, how are we doing? I was, I just woke up. I gotta <laughs> cranking this one out early. Just move. Um, I do like that meme. End video. Nine twenty. All right. Let's see. Really, really, really would appreciate it if you could give me the opportunity to learn from your experiences by all moving to North Korea. I um. I, I really, I could really, because I've never talked with a, a, you know, a person with experience culturally. In that. True. Okay. So uh, a little long, a little long, I'll, but a good bit. Okay. A, a little bit long. Okay. At the 10 minutes and 38, uh, it's just across that old school YouTube line. But, but yeah, um, good bit. Okay. But this is a, you know what? I'm glad. I'm very glad that. I'm I'm glad that we decided to watch this before we talk about everything, because um, boy oh boy, do we have a lot of talk to talk about with this debate, right? <sighs> so.
So, here's my thoughts on the debate. Okay. And I'm going to have some critiques and some, some, some commentary and everything. Uh, the debate was hilarious to me. I really fucking thought it was funny. I had a good time. Um, but also, I was on vacation, so I got to just be fucking throwing peanuts. That was just eating popcorn and throwing peanuts. Um, hey, Sugar Glass, good to see you. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Mel Vosh debate was a ridiculous shit show. Um, and I have a lot to say about it because... Here's my biggest criticism of Vosh, okay? I'm going to lay that out first. We're going to do Vosh first because, come on, let's be honest. For good reason, everybody, a lot of people have been criticizing Mel. Um, a lot of people have been criticizing Mel. Um, and they have good reason for it. But I'm going to start with the Vosh critique, okay? Vosh, yeah, that's right. Season two, heel turn. Vosh bad. No, actually, it's not about Vosh being bad. Um, Vosh, I think did a very good job at pointing out inconsistencies on Twitter and pointing out that Mel was a was a bad faith actor. But, big but here, okay? Nobody knows who Mel is, okay? Vosh has a huge following, massive. Vosh gets as many live viewers on average as, uh, we just watched it, Sugar Glass. Um, at, just, like, literally, at live viewers as more than Mel has total followers, okay? So, one of the problems is that because Mel refused to talk about the tweets, Vosh looked like an asshole. And I'm sorry, but that's true. It, he seemed like a Twitter-obsessed asshole. And I don't think he was wrong in what he was saying because, quite frankly, I think that Mel is super, super dishonest on Twitter. Um, I have a lot to say about here, but we're going to talk about Vosh first, okay? Because I do want to critique Vosh. Um, I, I know you say that meh about time somebody held her down, but here's the problem, though. Yes, but if you didn't see the explanation... Here's the problem. Hold on a second. Hold on. Before everybody freaks out, hear, hear me out, okay? Uh, hear me out, okay? In the debate... Okay, when you have a debate with somebody, you cannot rely on context before or after necessarily. You can for your audience, but your audience is already probably going to agree with you, okay? Maybe they don't. But there, there's a higher chance of them agreeing with you because they're familiar with your content. They're familiar with whatever beefs you might have had with somebody. Vosh has a massive audience, though. And most of those people aren't up to date on Mel's Twitter drama. And because Mel successfully avoided talking about Twitter, Vosh came off looking a little bit like a Twitter-obsessed asshole. Now, again, I don't think he is a Twitter-obsessed asshole. I think that uh, I think that he's right to call her out. But I think the way that he went about it was perhaps uh, too open, too vulnerable to the type of weaseling that Mel does. And Mel does weasel, okay? And there were also a couple of points in my posi it, it, from my position where Vosh uh, looked bad optically, okay? One of those was talking about the DM from the disabled black trans North Korean, whatever he said. I can't even remember. That was not a good look, in my opinion. Not that he did really anything super bad or wrong. I just feel like it came off as very spiteful and disingenuous. And everybody knew it. And so as a result, he looked like the disingenuous one. Um, And... and I can understand where there is something funny to be made fun of about, you know, just like constantly weaponizing idpol. Uh, it came off very, um, it came off a little fedora tippy, okay? Like, look, that's all, okay? I, again, 
I know there's a lot of Vosh fans in the audience, and you know I'm OG Vosh chatter myself. I've seen a lot of Vosh debates, and it did have anti-SJW vibes. I agree, and that's not a good look because anti-SJWs aren't funny. They're not funny people, um, and uh, and I think that he could have done. I think he could have landed that one better. You're gonna talk about how he called her an abuser and a manipulator. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about that as well. We're gonna talk about that as well. Um, so I think that was another, uh, spot, uh, worth criticizing. I think that though that joke and that arc of jokes came off kind of silly. And now there's two more criticisms I have for Vosh. Okay. So the third criticism I have for Vosh in this debate was Vosh did not control the direction of the conversation and he should have. The thing you have, when you are going up against somebody slippery, you can't pin slippery people down. That's their thing. They don't get pinned. They're very slippery. Mel is only on Twitter. She goes on other people's platforms where she doesn't have to take any risk. She just appears on their show. She doesn't have her own channel or anything. She can slip out of just about anything. You have to lure her into her own situation. And what happened in this debate, in my opinion, is that Mel successfully weaseled out, wiggled out, slip, slippery, slippery Mel out of the most important parts of the, uh, uh, of the conversation that needed to be had. And uh, I think that Vosh could have done better at, instead of immediately trying to pin her down, um, that... Uh, wait, we actually do Saucy Foss. It's just all, it's it's all caps. Wait, does it not work anymore? We do have it. We do have, uh, we do have that. I don't remember why it's not working. Is it with one capital letter? Fuck. There we go. Liar. There it goes. Anyway. Um, so, um, I guess it's lowercase. I don't know. That's weird. Hey, Hexagram. Good to see you. Um, so those were the three ones. And now let's talk about the fourth one, which I think is important to discuss. Okay. Vosh calling Mel an abuser. Now, what is wrong with calling someone an abuser? Or is there anything wrong with calling someone an abuser? Um, well, in my opinion, there is not anything necessarily wrong with accusing somebody of being an abuser. Um, I think that you can accuse somebody of that. I think that you should do so with evidence. Now, as to my knowledge, I don't believe that Vosh accused her directly of being an abuser, but it was heavily, heavily implied. He definitely said on multiple, uh, multiple spots, this is abuser shit. This is the shit that abusers do, abuser tactics, etc., etc. I... I, I recognize that's not literally accusing someone directly, directly of being an abuser, but let's be real. Come on. We don't need to play coy with this. That is an accusation of somebody being an abuser, okay? I'm sorry. That's just... That's just true, okay? He did call her directly a manipulator and abuser. Okay. So let's talk about this then, okay? That is heavily implied. Um, does Mel deserve that type of accusation well it depends on the context right um i do believe that mel is very very manipulative i do agree with that by the way like i actually unironically 100 percent agree with that analysis um i think that mel is in in her conversations this and this is not just with vosh by the way i said the same thing about her conversation with dylan i think mel is very very dishonest um, and I think that she, when she, that she doesn't tell the truth about what she believes, I don't think that she tells the truth about anything, by the way, just so you know, Mel lies all the time. For those who don't know, I was Mel's personal friend for, uh, over a year. And we recent, well, not recently, like at the beginning of this year, we had a big falling out. And the reason we had a falling out was because she kept going after Merrick. Okay. And I said in private, I'm like, Mel, Listen, I've been your friend for a long time. Can you stop this shit with Merrick? And the answer was, fuck you, no, basically. And that, that just, that, I said, I, I can't do this shit anymore. I'm not going to do this. 
Um, and uh, I think, for my purposes, I do think that that is that Mel is very manipulative. Um, now, with regard to the term abuser, that is a very loaded word. When you say that somebody is um, is an abuser, usually you mean that they like abuse people that they're in a part that they're like IRL with. So I won't really agree with Vosh calling her an abuser. Um, I think that's a bit a bit much. I don't know, like, but it depends on what you mean, right? Most people, um, uh, I mean, that's a good question, Gina. I didn't even think of it. I didn't even know she was on the Discord. If you feel it's appropriate to ban her, I would be 100% okay with that, by the way. Like, 100%. Um, you can do that if you want to. I just, I didn't even know she was still in there. I thought she was not in there. Um, and then this morning, somebody asked me about it. That was when I realized she was, and I said, well, fuck, whatever. Like, have her in. You can ban her from the Discord if you want to. I don't care. Um, I think saying that, like, um, does Mel engage in manipulative behavior? Yes, 100%. Oh, 100%. There's no question about that. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute, okay? Um, we're going to talk about that in just a minute, okay? So I think that Vosh was probably... Um, yeah, I I know you asked about it. I said I don't care because if she picks a fight, but but you know I'm also I if if Gina thinks that it's a better idea to ban her, that's fine. We'll we'll, we'll get there. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, I do think that Mel is a very manipulative person, and I think I understand that some people want to use the word abusive. I think we should be really careful about these terms personally, but I don't think Vosh was way out of line by saying that she uses abusive tactics. I think Vosh also sometimes can use abusive tactics on people that he doesn't like or that he doesn't appreciate. Um, but I'm going to be completely honest. And and this is, this is again, I, I mean, I'm a streamer. Obviously, I, I like Vosh's content. But as you know, I front-loaded my critique of Vosh. Um, actually, let's finish that first. I don't think that Vosh should have called her an abuser. Calling her manipulative, sure. Saying that, um, that you know... Uh, I, I just don't think the evidence is there to call somebody an abuser because, and, and the reason why I say that is because usually when you think of abuser, you think of somebody who is harming their partners, right? An abuser is usually somebody who abuses their partners and we don't have evidence of that. I, I think that's a little, uh, I, I, I think that's above, that's above and beyond. Okay. Um, so those are my four core critiques of Vosh. Okay. That Vosh didn't uh he, he didn't manage to uh convey context during the debate he did after i think his segment after was really good at getting people on board with understanding the problem um you can't criticize him without being sexist oh i don't remember that one but it, i i don't know if you have a clip for that we could review that uh, I, don't, I don't know that one um so so there's the first one the the second one was uh that i don't think that he kept uh a oh the second the second criticism was that i didn't i thought his joke about the being dm'd by the trans black but that was a cringy joke in my opinion i feel like the joke failed and it made him look like an anti sjw not a good look in my opinion not the worst sin but not great the third one was that he didn't do a good job pinning um mel's like he didn't he tried too hard to pin mel down and as a result, Mel was able to slipper, slippery her way out and get away without actually getting exposed. Um, and then number four, in my opinion, um, was, you know, I think that calling her an abuser is a little over the top. That's a little, that's a little much. Okay. That's, that's too much. Okay. Um, now let's talk about everything else. I've gotten my critique of Vosh out of the way. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, just now, I, I hope that chat, I hope you will all agree. Those are good faith criticisms, right? I think those are good faith, actual criticisms that I believe. I do believe these things. I've thought about this a lot and that's correct. Okay. So just so that we don't like, obviously I am pretty open and upfront that I like Vosh. I like his content. I, you know, Vosh has helped me personally. Okay. Um, but I was also friends with Mel. So what I'm trying to do here is illustrate that while I have certain biases, I have done, I'm doing a pretty, I'm trying my best to lay out those biases, obviously, so you can come to a conclusion and understand where I'm coming from on this. Okay. 
All right. So now, Mel. Let's talk about Mel. Okay. Mel, in my opinion, is a is a a manipulative person. Like a very manipulative person. I do not trust Mel. I don't, if people, if somebody was to come up with me, if a, if a coworker or a colleague was to come up to me and say, hey, do you trust Mel? I would say, no, I don't trust Mel. If they asked me why, I would say, here's a number of reasons why. I don't think that Mel is a trustworthy person. And that has nothing to do with her being an ML. It has nothing to do with her stance on China. It has to do with the fact that over the course of the last year plus of me knowing Mel, Mel has become increasingly toxic. Her following has increasingly got to her head. She's burned bridges with nearly everyone I know. And she has she has begun to double down on the, some of the most toxic shit you can imagine, like what we saw today. So let's look at that real quick, okay? Because I happen to have this available. Nobody, not many people are going to be able to get to this. Let's see if I can, uh, let's see if I can find this shit. Where'd it go? Oh, did it get deleted already? Oh, it got deleted already. Oh, how nice. You see, now that's something that happens a lot. Okay. Let's see it here real quick. Uh, where'd it go? Was it here? Where'd it go? Let me see if I can find this thing real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Is it deleted? Where'd it go? Wait a second. It is deleted, isn't it? Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me make sure. It's deleted. Right here... This is the link. Y'all can go check this. It's been deleted. This morning, Mel did a uh, a tweet with um an an animation. It had a it had an anime figure going da 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 and it was saying everything about it was Uyghur genocide denial with anime music. Okay, that's not a funny joke at all. That isn't a good joke. It's not funny. It's not a good April Fool's. It is 4chan tier genocide denial bullshit. There is no punchline. It is just bad, okay? And this is the type of shit that I'm talking about when I say, is Mel a trustworthy or good person? No, that is not good. That is not good at all. Now, you all know, you all no, that, uh, now, by the way, just, just in case you all don't believe me, mods, those of you mods who saw me post this in mod chat this morning, the, you sound off if you actually saw it. You got me? Is it here? Is it? Oh, you got it. Oh, people. Oh my God. Yes. People have it. Yes. You archivers. I couldn't archive it this morning because I was setting up for stream. Oh, how perfect. Let's just watch this together. Let's see it with your own motherfucking eyes. Okay? Here you go. Let's... Oh, I hope the video will play in archive. I don't know if it'll play in web archive. This is the one. It says, genocide bad, pleading face. And here's the video. Please play. Come on. Please. Oh, yeah. I have to mute it. Hold on. I have to mute it. I can't... Uh, I can't play it because... Yep. Silent... There you go. Silent saw it. Yeah, it'll get copyrighted, but don't worry. I'll, I'll mute it. Don't worry. Hold on. We'll get here. Hey, Zarel. Here's a screenshot if it doesn't play. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to play because it's fucking hell to play videos through archive because they're super compressed. Mods all saw. All of my mods will sign off on this, on this credibility. This happened. Let now let's learn some facts about Xinjiang. Da 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 da. It says everything is false and it downplays everything. And the comments are so bad. What's the original song? Catchy as fuck. I wish I could say change it, uh, save it onto my timeline. Blah blah blah. Let's see if this one's got the picture. Here you go. Genocide bad. One prison was actually a five-star apartment complex.
Nice. Nice. Amazing. Yeah, this is literally, by the way, this is literally the format. This is not, this is correct. This meme format is used by Nazis. They will do this exact same meme for Holocaust denial. It is the exact same meme. Snowdrift, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here because I think I have the most based take of all about all of this shit. Okay? So stick around, okay? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. D everybody, you know the memes? Wait, wait. For those of you who don't know, for those of you Zoomers, did you know that it was a meme? Here, let me let me look it up. Here we go. Oh, wow. How convenient. It's literally by this lying about Auschwitz from the SPL, the Southern Poverty Law Center, an organization arranged around hate. You probably thought you knew a thing about Auschwitz. It was a nightmarish Nazi extermination camp in Poland where more than one million people were murdered, most of them gassed to death with Zyklon B and then cremated. Mengele per performed horrible medical experiments on live humans, including twins and those with blue eyes. At the end, the Soviets closed it and the guards were killed. And interestingly, the, the aim of the thoughtful Germans who ran the place thought it was for reform, re-education, and rehabilitation. Inmates were taught trades. Townspeople saw the life at, at Auschwitz as luxurious. What with the inmates having attractive red brick sleeping quarters with bunk beds and mattresses, flush toilets, porcelain covered, porcelain covered stoves for cozy heating, and double paned casement windows. Now, when was this article written? Oh, this article was written in 2010. I'm not bullshitting you. When I say that what Mel posted this morning is on par with Holocaust denial, okay? Do you understand that? And I can substantiate that, all right? It is substantiatable, okay? Making a meme on April Fool's Day where you do it, where you take a 4chan format that is usually used to deny the Holocaust and you replace the letters to be about an ongoing atrocity, a genocide in China and making a meme about it. That's not funny. That's not okay. I am a fan of dark humor. I am a fan of taboo humor. But come on. We all know what this is. This is hiding behind irony to do genocide denial. That's it's plain and simple. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And and if people disagree with me on this, I I I I challenge you. I will challenge you to a debate. I'm serious. I'll challenge you to a debate, okay? Because this shit is, this is bullshit. And anybody who, who's going to excuse this type of shit is just lying to themselves, okay? So let's continue talking about Mel. Mel constantly deletes random shit on Twitter that is ba a bad look for her. Because that way you can never find it. Very manipulative and weird. Now, I recognize lots of people delete things on Twitter, but it's weird how frequently this is. You know how constant you try to go see a Mel tweet and it's deleted? It's to the point where people are taking screenshots because she will deny ever having said it. She will deny ever having done it. She will lie to the face of her people who are following her, people who are interviewing her. This is what we call lying and manipulating. That is lying and manipulating and when you do it to a friend like myself it can it can go into gaslighting okay and i'm not going to get into that but all i'll say is that this isn't just public shit this happens in private too mel does this to people in private 
I know multiple people who have had this shit happen to them in private. Mel will say something. You'll say, wait a minute, that's kind of fucked up. And then she'll say, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. You're, you're wrong. That is fucked in my opinion. Okay. I find that really, really fucked. But that's such a me that's even a meaningless one. We're talking about extensive things. Okay. If you want to get another, I mean, she's done this a million times. That that would be, I consider that gaslighting when it's done to a friend. I'm not going to go in about that on a big deal. I could tell you my stories with it, okay? There's a reason we're not friends anymore. We were friends for a long time. Mel was the first person I ever had on as a guest to the show. Anybody who's been watching me since the beginning will know that I was really good friends with Mel. And Mel was dishonest and toxic in private, too. That was an old video. Uh, it's up on my stream. It's up on my YouTube channel. I think it's one of the first videos. Fucking March or something. Yeah, it was the Lord of the Rings meme. Yep. Yeah. So, and, and look, look, look. This is the sort of stuff that happens, okay? She also denies the Uyghur genocide. No, nothing cares a lot. Hmm. Do you mind answering the questions on ra on whether or not there's a genocide happening with the Uyghurs? Genocide is bad. Genocide is bad. Genocide not good. Genocide bad. Uyghurs are being attacked. Genocide very bad. Genocide is bad. Mel is a dishonest person. Get it through your heads, okay? And I say this because I know there are people who like Mel in the audience here, okay? Windleby, I get it. I understand. I, I I don't think that people should... Yeah, can you see my mug? It says valid as fuck. It's a pink wug mug. We love pink mug here. Mel, I don't know if I would say she's a pathological liar, but she does lie a lot, okay? She lies a lot. Hey, thank you so much, Lonnie. Really appreciate it. Um, oh, Can you explain the genocide bad meme? Yes, okay? I'll explain this because this is the thing that I want to do here, okay? I feel like this should have been a drama mama, but whatever. Let's just let's just do this, okay? Mel, the, here's the main image, okay? This is the one. This is where the meme really came from. So, Mel has been beefing on Twitter, well, with everybody, because that's what Mel does. Mel is purely a poster on Twitter. That's, she doesn't have a platform. She doesn't have a... Uh, Oh, I know. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good, Alora. So she doesn't have a Twitch presence. She doesn't have a YouTube presence. She beefs with people on Twitter. She's been beefing with No Nothing for months. She's been beefing with Dario for a year. She's been beefing with Vosh for like six months, okay? She does this a lot. Now, there's been multiple times where people say, hey, Mel denies the Uyghur genocide. And this has become her meme, okay? I see a guitar keyboard and a Thank microphone. Thank you very much. Are we going to get a live concert? Someday, yes. Someday you will. Okay? This meme she's been doing for a long time. Whenever she's asked, whenever she's asked for uh, an answer to questions about the Uyghur genocide or anything really, instead of actually answering any questions, she will just say, I, oh, why do I have to answer for China? What do you think I have to do? Answer for China? Genocide bad. She'll never answer the question. She'll just say genocide bad. And then she does. Uh, and then she says, why do I always have to answer it? Well, it's funny because seemingly nobody can find you actually answering whether you downplay it or not. Except that she has. Okay? We just saw her do it today. Well, she deleted it. See? So anytime she's ever actually talked about the genocide, she downplays it. But then when she's asked directly about it, she goes, genocide bad. And what that means is it's a way of technically saying that you're denouncing genocide without actually saying it is a schoolyard bully tactic. We all know what this is, okay? We all know what this is, okay? Okay. 
And now we got to talk about another thing, okay? Yeah, it's the I disavow. It is. Yes, it is. Exactly. You're both on the same, on the same uh, vibe there, okay? So let me give you another thing, okay? Watch this. Okay? I'm going to show you something really interesting. Okay? This is this is, I just got to get here real quick. Uh where do we go here? Here we go. Let's get down here. Let's go. Oh, let's see. So she's deleted a lot of other ones. Interesting. How interesting. I wonder if she deletes everything that could potentially cause cause a uh, fucking problems. Let's take a look here. Let's see if I can find this. Where did it go? Hmm. How interesting. I bet it is gone. I bet she got rid of that one too. Damn. Oh, whoopsies. Good thing yours truly got this one. Okay. Look at this. This was this morning. I had a bowl of pho for the first time in a year. I'm so happy. Merrick was not inviting, in, invited because she eats it like a fucking child. Now, I think this is gone now, by the way. I couldn't find this on there. Yeah, you probably should, Devious Chillster. Not a bad idea. We're talking about Mel in d general. And yes, I am talking about the debate. So. Now, this isn't the only thing, by the way. Let me tell you something else that happened. You have seen, by the way, um, you've seen that so far I've had receipts for everything. Well, it is impossible to have receipts for everything. However, I got a couple more receipts for you, okay? Because I always got the receipts. You know I always got the receipts. Let me just, let me the just get this up. one real quick. Let me find this one. Do I have the receipt for this one? I might not have the receipt for this one. But yes, I do have the receipt for this one. And it's not deleted either. It's not deleted either. Woo, here we go. Let's take a look. So remember after the debate, when after the debate, and, and by the way, just so you know, I have no doubts that some of you motherfuckers from VGG are assholes on Twitter. Some of you are obsessed little parasocial weirdos and you go get mad at everybody, okay? I know that, okay? I'm not downplaying that at all. I know what it's like to get the fucking anger of a community. DGG fucked, like, fucked my entire internet, okay? There's no doubt that certain amount of the massive audience that Vosh has were giant assholes and went and did annoying things, okay? But, let's be real. Mel... 100% picked this fight with Vosh. Completely. And Mel often engages in dog piles and all kinds of other things. So I don't think that Mel can really play victim when it comes to the dog piling game. Okay? So, Mel, after the debate, deleted her account for approximately six to eight hours, okay? She went offline at the nighttime, and then she brought her chat, her, her video, her, she brought her thing back up in the morning. And I want to show you why this is important. Because this was the first thing that she tweeted when she came back. She left because of harassment, performatively leaving the website because she's being harassed by VGG. Oh, I need to run. And the first thing she does when she comes back, is make this post. Every day I think about, about how America is obsessed with and threatened by women of color and trans femmes. This is a totally random post by Merrick, whose first account got destroyed because of people associated with Mel, just so you know, Mel's group of friends. And Mel, uh, Mer Merrick was just randomly talking about a subject that's interesting, okay? Every day I think about how America is obsessed with and threatened by confident and attractive women. And then a, a post about Lindsay Lohan, Angelina Jolie, and uh, uh, Megan Fox. And uh, was this by was this thing by Cassandra Fairbanks? Oh, maybe it was Cassandra Fairbanks. I'm not sure. Let's just be real. I already covered the tanky harassment of Merrick, okay? 
Okay, let's let's not get distracted here. Let's not get distracted. I, I recognize if that's like a slightly wrong claim, but here we go. This was the first post. Okay, Merrick, shut the fuck up. Ta challenge. She's so tone deaf. It's pathetic. If all, if only we could be well-to-do suburban white ladies like her. Okay. So first of all, for those of you who don't know, Merrick worked in full service sex work for a long time because Merrick is not a suburban white lady. Well, she is maybe now, she has a, a place now, but for most of her life, Merrick was a full service sex worker, AKA hardcore IRL, very risky, very dangerous work. Hello, Vermin, wonderful to see you today. And Mel does this all the time, okay? Mel does this all the time. Mel will go and, and she hates Merrick, by the way. She has started so many hate trains on Merrick. And by the way, this was just a throwaway. And this already, this got like 200 likes and a fuckload of comments. And immediately after this, a bunch of people went and harassed Merrick's new account, which her first account already got destroyed. So this is what I'm talking about. Mel engages in harassment and then also denounces other people for their audience being harassing. It is very hypocritical. It is very manipulative. It is very dishonest, okay? It was this crap against Merrick recent. Mel has had a problem with Merrick for a long time. Our friendship ended because I tried to ask her politely and in private to please stop sending harassment at Merrick. Because remember, you all know I like to do my research. I like to dig in and get the receipts. And I found out that Mel kept retweeting Merrick. And every time Mel would retweet Merrick, the tanky, the tanky sphere would, would restart their hate train on Merrick again. Mel even was fucking goofing around with on the day when they were accusing her of a terrorist act. Mel was making excuses for people who tried to get Merrick swatted. That happened on my stream, okay? This is toxic. In fact, let me tell you experience I had personally in public. After I privately... Yes, that really happened. Yes, that you can watch my original stream with Merrick. Long before... Sorry, everybody. Gonna toot my own horn here. Long before Vosh had Merrick on... This bitch right here had Merrick on to hear her side of the story. And I did my research. You can go watch that panel if you want to. During that, while Merrick was on, the more, I, while she was on, harassment was blowing out of control. That, we don't do any of that here. That's brigading. However, if you feel that any account has violated rules, it is within your power to report it. I will never advocate for such things, um, but if you feel it's within your power, that is your own choice. All I'm doing is laying out the evidence, okay? Mel, after like a month or so after, um, I was ahead of the curve. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I, I am kind of like, uh, like really embedded in the fucking streaming thing. I'm really passionate about it. I tend to know what's going on in streaming. I tend to know what's happening, okay? Just saying. If you harass anyone, it's a permaban. Yes, obviously. Yes, I agree. So, hold on a second here. Okay. Let's continue with what I was talking about, all right? I will be. Don't worry, Nibiru. I will. Um... After I had a conversation in private with Mel, Mel started up another thread. I think this was a couple of days after, maybe a week or two after. Mel started up a thread harassing Merrick in public. And I called uh, I called her out because I was done with it. I'd already talked to her in private. And I said, hey, um, uh, when, when I said, hey, 
uh, this is fucked. Mel, this is bullshit. You picked a fight with Merrick, and now you're playing the victim. You're saying that you're getting harassed because you went out of your way totally unprovoked. Merrick had not said anything about Mel. Merrick was minding her own business, and Mel went out of nowhere, screen capped a total, this was totally parasocial, screen capped a random interaction between Merrick and ContraPoints, and then made a big stink about it. So I said about something in public. And do you know what Mel's response was? Mel's response was to make a tweet subtweeting me that said, oh yeah, every time you poke the white girls, they all, all the white girls circle the wagons around each other. That feels remarkably bad faith. When I say you went out of your fucking way to pick a fight with Merrick who did nothing to you. And now you're saying it's white girls circling the wagons. That is pathetic. That is pathetic, in my opinion. That is so disingenuous and so pathetic. I know you all are very happy to have me screaming about things, but I'm just going to say, like, I, I think Mel is just a bad actor. Like, really bad actor, okay? Like, really bad in just about every single way, okay? And I recognize that people are going to... And, and the reason why I opened this with my criticism of Vosh, the reason why I laid my biases out on the table is because I want people to understand where I'm coming from and be able to weigh this evidence knowing that, yeah, I probably have a certain amount of biases, but I was Mel's friend for a long time. And, and the reason why I wanted to lay all my potential biases out, having been Mel's friend for a long time, I tried to get Mel on on Vosh a long time ago. Do you ago. think the persistent comparison of Mel's to Nazis was appropriate? I think it's fair. I think it's fair. Snowdrift, I know that like it is a bit it is a bit hyperbolic, but come on. It's the way they behave. Like no joke. This is the same shit that we encounter with Nazis. They do this literally Snowdrift she she posted a, mo a meme this morning that Nazis used to deny the Holocaust all the time. She's behaving like a Nazi. So I think while perhaps it was a little bit much in the conversation, I do think uh, that it was, I do think that it's a fair comparison because it reminds me of that too. Do you like, like, I think sometimes it's worth, uh, it's worth um, talking about. Uh, I think it's worth reminding ourselves why we don't like genocide denial. Okay. Do do we all do we all remember why genocides are a problem? I think sometimes it's easy to become terminally online and forget that it's not just a topic we're joking about. The Holocaust not it set Jewish history back. I mean, no, I don't even want to talk about it in that way. So many Jewish people were killed in the Holocaust. We can't even we still can't comprehend it to this day. That is still echoing loudly through all of the planet, the number of Jews who died in the Holocaust. And in addition, gay people, trans people. We all know, because I talk about this all the time, The one of the first places targeted by the Nazis was Magnus Hirschfeld's Institute for Sexual Studies. The One of the only places on the globe at the time researching trans people. We lost a, de a century of trans history and trans healthcare history because of the Nazis. It's these things, no matter who perpetrates them, are monstrous. And the reason why we get mad about genocide denial is not because we don't want the facts to be discussed. It's because what these things do is they are, they're the equivalent of victim blaming. It is the political equivalent of victim blaming. When you say, hey, whatever your feelings are about China and about all this stuff, isn't it really bad that there are people being put in camps and they're being re-educated and their culture has been deemed unworthy? Isn't that really bad? And, th and when people downplay it, what they're doing is they're protecting somebody who's doing something atrocious, so atrocious that it's hard for us to even imagine. And Mel made a meme about that. 
Mel made a meme about that. A meme that Nazis also use about, in the exact same format that Nazis use it, about the Holocaust. I don't think that's a good thing. Have I had a one-on-one? -on -one? I've had many one-on-one -on -one conversations with Mel, both in private and on this channel. I had a debate with her about my problems with Marxism and Leninism, and it was really good. Okay, so there we are on that, okay? So now let's lay out, before we go any further about this conversation, let me just lay out my problems with Mel. All in one place. Unbelievable Twitter toxicity. Yes, exactly, Gina. Exactly. Yes. Precisely. It hurts the entire human race. Twitter toxicity is the first one. And that's not that bad. That's the low one. But if you're a friend of Mel, if you're a, a co-worker of Mel, it is bad. It is fucking bad. Secondly, unbelievable dishonesty. No one can trust Mel. Not friends, not allies, not co-workers. You can't trust Mel. She doesn't tell the truth. She just doesn't. She deletes shit and then she lies about having ever said it. When you have photographic evidence, she will lie to your face. Third, she deliberately is manipulative in the way that she words things to make it so that you can't technically pin her on one thing and she can get away with it, okay? Four, genocide denial. And five, constantly reigniting horrible harassment campaigns against people who are her personal enemies, okay? There's no nothing that Merrick has done justifies a harassment campaign, yet Mel keeps starting it over and over and over again. Mel is who she claims to hate. Mel is part of that problem in a very real way. Okay? So those are my, my things. Now, if we're going to talk about the debate itself... Well, maybe. I mean, I talked about a lot of different things. I don't know if it was the deepest thing ever. I probably didn't word it. I'm a streamer. That's how it goes. Um, but thank you. Mel, in the debate, and in my opinion, Mel did, quote unquote, very good in the debate. She did good for herself in the debate. Um, Mel was incredibly slippery. She was able to, portray, to make Vosh appear as though he was a Twitter-obsessed person. Um, would I support deplatforming of Mel? I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, that's a tough question for me. I just think we should treat Mel like we would treat a, a Nazi. Debate the fucking shit out of her, expose her, and treat her like like a a a opponent because she is an opponent. I'm sorry, but you don't like. I'm sorry. I think I've laid out a good case here. Genocide denial, constant lying, constantly attacking other lefties, constantly, constantly uh, engaging in harassment campaigns. Well, that's fair. You missed, yeah, well, so did I, Retcon, but I kept up. You know me, I'm always on the watch. I, I can agree with, I can see where you're coming from with that, Vermin. I have, I have a whole, I have a really weird position on it, okay? I think that Mel is super, super toxic. And uh, also, by the way, just so you know, Mel's been going around on a little, little, uh, a little uh, press tour the last couple of days, lying to friends who trust her. Just, just so you know, people who actually trust Mel are getting burned right now. Because Mel will go on their show, lie to their face, and if they give her benefit of the doubt because she's a friend, then they get burned by it. Yeah, yeah. What's her motive? I can't speculate on that. That'd be bad, Nibiru. That'd be very bad. But uh, thankfully, that won't happen. 
I was only half listening during the debate. I had to fight the urge to sympathize. She's really good at using her femininity to garner sympathy. Vosh was talking about it. Okay, let's talk about that, okay? Let's talk about that, okay? Um, let, let's talk about that part, okay? Do we think that Mel was using uwu feminine bullshit to win over gamers, uh, the gamer crowd? Uh, I think there's, I think there's some evidence of that. I mean, I think there's, I think there's some evidence of that, but at the same time, how are you going to police something like that? Okay. I mean, I will say that, I will say that, yeah, there were certain parts where she laid it on really, really hardcore, um, where she's like, oh, why are you being so mean? While she's making memes about Stalin being 85% right, um, whether, you know, all, all of this, uh, I do think there was a certain amount. I do think there was a certain amount of that. I think it's reasonable to conclude that. But uh, what I will say is that you don't even have to talk about uh, you, you don't even have to talk about the femininity angle. You don't have to even pin on that if you don't want to. Um, you 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 really don't have to even talk about that because she's misleading enough on every other front. She wants you to to talk about her being feminine because then she can claim you're being transphobic. Which she's done. Exactly that. You can just say. You can just say. She's manipulative. She's playing nice in the name of. Uh, of, of, uh, of, of um, sounding nice to you all. Oh, I agree, Vermin Hands, but I mean that's the I mean that's a double-edged sword, right? I mean, I think you, I think there's room to bring it up, but I can also understand uh, Vermin, I don't know if you were here for when I did my critique. The first I opened this with critiquing Vosh's uh side of things because my whole goal in this, of course, as you know, I tend to do, uh was to make my case, but to do so with my biases and my uh beliefs um laid out, you know, uh in the open. And I do think that one of the things uh, that that Vosh made some mistakes on in going up against Mel is that Mel is looking for those types of things. Mel was clip farming for the for Tanky Twitter. Like, I don't know how intentional it is, but that is her thing. I don't know if she knows that she's doing it, but I mean, I think she does to a certain degree, but she'd never admit that sort of thing, of course. But I think what she was looking for is stuff like that so that she can say, oh, you're targeting my femininity, blah, blah, blah. I don't think you have to do that. I don't think you have to fall into those because that just gives her ammunition. Yeah. Mel is a piece of shit. There you go. There you go. I do agree. I think I think Mel's a piece of shit. I, I've made that very clear. Simple. Yeah, this would be a good S tier um drama mama but i'm not done yet because i'm not quite done yet i want to talk about some of the stuff that actually happened in the debate because all i've talked about is the evidence all around this okay do i think vosh was irresponsible in platforming she gained thousands of followers after the conversation hmm. Hmm. no not really um Appreciate it. Your thank you, Pain Sama. We are going tier four. Bless and thank you very much. A god tier tier four. Um, did she actually gain thousands? I can tell you. Let's find out. Yes, she has gained well over a thousand followers. Yes, I know because I just keep track of people's followers. Yep. Um. Uh, here's the problem, though. Um. We're, we're going to talk about a couple different things. Um, Mel, here's what I think. Do I think it was irresponsible to platform her? Not necessarily. I do think that... Um, you're welcome, Pain Sama. I'll do my best. I'll, I will keep doing my best. All right? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Twitter followers. Oh, I think it's just tanky Twitter. Circling wagons, of course. The thing is, if you look at the biggest tanky accounts, they cap out really hard. Tanky accounts, they'll blow up like nothing. They blow up out of nowhere. Tanky accounts are, are like a mushroom. One morning, you, will, you, you there's nothing. The next morning, there's a bunch of mushrooms on the on the um, on the front lawn overnight. And much like mushrooms, 
they don't get very big, you know? Mushrooms kind of cap out. Now, some mushrooms maybe are mutant and whatever. Um, it's not bots. They just, they're really, really insular. They always support each other. They always, they do this, this sort of stuff all the time. They have really close groups of friends who say, hey, check out this person. It's a new tanky. And they go, Brrrp. But here's the thing. Yeah, that's just the fruiting body. I know. I know. I know a lot about mushrooms. Um, so, um, then it's not even mutual aid. They don't give each other money. Well, some of them do. Okay, hold on a second. We're getting off. We're getting off on the, we're getting off on this, okay? And not in that way, not in the fun way, okay? No a secular socialist, that would be a disaster, by the way. If lefties got along as well as tankies did, we would be just as useless as tankies. Because here's the thing. Tankies have no standards. They have zero standards, okay? They have. They will literally blow up an account like Bay Area 415. They will blow up accounts like Mel. They will blow up accounts all over the place of people who end up being fucking undercover Nazis. Yo, eccentric mudkip, thank you so I much. I've been more or less behind on this stuff. Thanks for informing me. Keep You're up very the welcome. Good work. And thank you. Red flag in the background. I've talked about this a couple separate times. You know that that's my opinion. Yes, that is true, Vermin. I agree with you, by the way. I don't think here's the he, he, so let's be let's do a little quick thing okay because I've been talking about tankies a lot and I want people to understand my mentality in this okay I don't think that tankies are like um the the a a a, a uh, existential threat to the left that tankies are going to take over or anything like that what tankies do is they cause infighting they in, engage in some of the most vicious harassment campaigns that drive off good content creators. Um, they muddle the di discourse. And here's the most, here's the last thing, okay? They spread misinformation that's really damaging, okay? Tankies are a very small, very, very small portion of the left. But one of the things that they do really well is they, just like the alt-right, mind you, the alt-right was, at one point, very, very small. And in fact, they still are pretty small. The core members of the alt-right are still really small. What, notice, though, that the alt-right gets things like 1350, gets things like Holocaust denial, gets things like the Jewish question. They're able to get these things out into the general populace. That's part of the problem. And that's where the tankies, I think, have the biggest thing. Because right now, they're... Oh, yes, I know they are. I I know they are. I know they are. Yeah, I know. And in fact, you'd be surprised how far that actually goes. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, so, what I'm trying to say is that... Um, hey, thank you so much. Finally paying off my student loan after 10 years. Here's a little something to celebrate. Also the red ain't bread. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate that. $50. Oh, fuck. I thought I said five. $50. Holy shit, cosmic, comic fan. Thank you so very much. That is incredibly generous of you. Thank you very much for supporting your demon mama. Deeply, deeply appreciate that. Thank you so very much. I'm the student loan. <laughs> Appreciate that a lot. Pog as hell. Thank you so much. Um, so there was something I was going to say, which is um, that tankies spread a lot of misinformation. There are a lot of people who are um, who are reluctant to even talk about the Uyghur genocide, because of how aggressive tankies are with spreading disinfo about it, with spreading doubts. That's why they do it. The same reason why Nazis want to instill doubt so that people don't take the stories of the Holocaust seriously, which allows them to do it again, the tankies are doing the same thing.
okay? And that's not good. And this is why I oppose tankies. Not because I think they're like the existential death of the of the left or anything like that. I don't think that's true. I just think that they are a uh, very, very negative faction of people that are engaged in a lot of toxicity that pick random targets, usually marginalized people that they don't like. And they go really hard on those people. Chud Logic doesn't talk about it for that reason. Yes. And I, I intend to be able to fix that very soon. Okay? Don't you worry. Okay? Don't you worry. I got plans. Okay? <laughs> go go get your homework done, uh, Gina. Go get your homework done. Why do you think they attack minorities like fascists do? question to be completely honest it's because i think that a lot of tankies have a really fucking reactionary streak i'm sorry it's true if you go if you ever listen i'm someone i always do my fucking homework okay i do my fucking homework all right i've i've what happened whoa refresh it refresh it refresh it more love Always Thank you, Melissa McDonald. Look forward to more. YouTube has been having a huge issue. Thank you so very much for the incredibly generous $20. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's not on my end. It's on YouTube's end, by the way. This is on YouTube's end. Yeah, it, it's a, it's on YouTube's end. So refresh if you need to. It's not It's not on my end. I have perfect everything is fine on my end. It's either on YouTube's end or something else, okay? It's too hot to handle. True. So, is are we back? I think we're back. Marco! Okay, all right, we're back. We're back. What was my answer to which thing? Why do you think they attack minorities like fascists do um i i think that it's um thank you so much yo appreciate that here's what i think i think that it is uh um it's a reactionary streak if you ever hang out if you ever are curious just go here's here's an exercise you can do if you personally want to become more informed on tankies go to tankies find a tanky that you know Go and see who they follow and just scroll through the accounts of the people they follow and see what they retweet. What you're going to find is they retweet a lot of traditionalistic, um, uh, culturally conservative propaganda all the time. Also, they avoid talking about things like how China hates gay people really bad, how China's horrible to gay people. They, they always avoid talking about these things. And the reason why they avoid that is because it's inconvenient to their narrative and because they don't care that much. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Amos. Really appreciate that. Are tankies any different than Nazbols? Uh, Not much. There's not much of a difference, in my opinion. There's a little bit of supposed ideological difference, but as far as how they act, not really. And you see them work a lot. Yeah, fuck tankies. Absolutely fuck tankies. Absolutely fuck tankies. Aw. Damn it. Lil Nas X picked somebody. Oh, that's too bad. It's all right. It's all right. Maybe someday in the future. Yeah, I think so. I think there's some truth to that, K-Prime. And this is why, I, by the way, this is why I've been having a, a really frustrating time with MLs and tankies in general. And, and, I, and I'm having a hard time. And here's the thing. MLs, listen, I know MLs always want to say, oh, we're not all tankies. We're not all tankies. We're not all tankies. Okay? Um, well... Cat's rad. That's a good question. Um, that's that's a good uh, question. 
I've never heard of tankies before until Demon Mama covered that debate with Blair White. Are tankies on the right, but like have leftist ideas? A tanky, okay, this is what a tanky is. A tanky is a hard authoritarian leftist who usually defends strongly the actions of Stalin, Mao, uh, Xi Jinping, etc. There you have it. That's a tanky. The image of the tanky is Tiananmen Square with the tanks about to run over the guy holding the bags. There you go. Okay. I don't believe that tankies are leftists. I don't. I don't believe they're meaningfully leftist. But these words don't mean anything at the end of the day because people dilute them all over the place. Okay. But here's the problem that I see. And and this is this is my here's my genuine question, okay? This is my genuine attempt because you all know that I've made fucking good effort, okay? Oh god, another thing? I don't know what this one was, Grime Dango. Don't worry. We we already she's already deleted she deleted the the uh, apologia one. Um let me, uh, uh, the, the, the April Fool's anime genocide apologia. Um, but, 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 uh, let me, let me, let me go into this. MLs, this is my genuine request. You all know, everybody who watches my show knows for a fact that I have had so many good faith conversations with MLs, including Mel, me so many MLs that I've had conversations with. Okay. MLs. Please get your shit together. You need to figure out a way. If you all are so organized and your ideology is so strong, you need to figure out a way to get people like Mel and Bay Area 415 and all of these genocide apologia dis dishonest people out of your fucking prominence. You all follow them. I see you. You all boost them. I see so-called serious MLs retweeting Bay Area 451, a guy who charges $50 for the revolution to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with him on his Patreon. Okay? A corporate lawyer who makes videos uh, where he, he discusses Disgustingly exploits the name of George Floyd to beg for, uh, for, um, to, to beg for donos as a, while well, he's a corporate lawyer. Exilix. Yes. That's so much better. That's so much better. Look, I don't charge anything for the stuff that I make. Okay. Okay. But you can choose to donate if you want to see my show succeed. I'm making a piece of of entertainment and information for you. Think of it like PBS. You want to help that? Go for it. I'm not going to sell you a fucking revolution. And guess what? When people try to sell you a revolution, when they're just selling you a product, we call those people liars. We call them grifters. We call those people dishonest. Why have we reached a point in time where you where we've let the discourse get to a point where if you say hey that guy just said give me fifteen dollars and you'll be a part of the cool revolution club come on that's ridiculous it's ridiculous they are on ironic larpers it is literally larpers it is so larp you and you want to know what the great irony is and this is the thing that i'm going to say about the debate because there were a lot of things that were wrong with the debate it was a mess i had a fun time watching it anyway because you know i like this stuff because i'm weird um but <sighs> there was a part in the debate hey thank you very very much you get nothing I would like to buy one nothing please Thank you. You have purchased one nothing. 85D2D Dark. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound very communist. Buying things? <laughs> Jesus. Um, all I'm saying is that... Wait, wait. Luna Oi is generally pretty good. Luna Oi? This is what I'm talking about. And I'll, I'll do a call out here. Okay? I blocked a tanky and donated to... Yeah! The true! Thank you very much, Relayer. Luna Oi, here you go. You want to call out Luna Oi? 
retweeted Bay Area 415. Uh, and the most obvious grifter you could possibly imagine. And Luna Oi retweets this motherfucker. Why? It's because it doesn't matter. They support anybody who has the right aesthetics. This is what I'm talking about. Because when I say the good MLs, the MLs that are, you're supposed to take seriously, these MLs who are supposedly the real deal, they always promote the fucking grifting, genocide denying idiots. Luna Oi likes mopping. This is stupid, okay? This is stupid, and I'm done playing these games. I am so done playing these games, okay? If you want to be the good ML, if you want to display how good your ideology is, you should be able to display that, and maybe, sorry, maybe this is, maybe this is, uh, this sounds a little too survival of the fittest or whatever for you, but if you are an ML and your ideology is supposed to deliver socialism to the world, and you can't even figure out when somebody is blatantly grifting you, they're selling you a $50 mug, a, not even a mug, Crowder gives you a mug, and fucking Bay Area 415 charges you $50 to join the, 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 the Central Committee. You could join the Central committee tier join the revolution for fifty dollars ten easy payments of 99.99 and you could be a part of the communist revolution in america oh my god enough and yes this is a call out to people like luna oi this is a call out to people like american johnson this is a call out to people like i don't even know who else who else do we want to talk about is a good faith ml it's stupid. This is ridiculous. I'm done pretending. I'm done dealing with it. It's fucking ridiculous. Hakeem. I don't know. I don't even know enough about Hakeem. Well, people tell me these are supposed to be the good ones. People tell me these people are serious. Oh, they're serious. Every time I talk to one, I find out they're not serious. So I'm sorry. But I don't have much faith in ml to do anything other than get grifted and 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 defeat themselves and cause harm you want to know another thing i've noticed lately you want to know another thing and i would love to be proven wrong on this but um i, I would love love to be disproven on this find me tankies or mls fighting with right wingers they don't do it they all just fight other leftists but and, and here's the thing. I get it. They don't think anyone that's not an ML isn't... A, they don't think those people are leftists. But guess what? There's a whole lot more conservative reactionaries than there are suck them fake leftists. So why the fuck do they only ever attack this faction and not everyone over here? I want to know why. And to me, that seems like if you were trying to... Listen, I don't want to make any allegations here, okay? But if you were trying to, to, you know, infiltrate and cause damage to the left, it seems like this is exactly the way that you would no, do you it. Nothing with nothing you would have a, a swarm of anonymous, nonsensical, dishonest, manipulative, genocide-denying, embarrassing grifters, and you would have them go and pick fights exclusively with lefties. Just a little sus is all I'm saying. Just a little motherfucking sus. Okay? Just saying. Okay? And guess what? They do it for free. That's the worst part. They do it for motherfucking free. Well, not all of them. To be fair, Bay Area 415 makes a lot of money off of his fucking Patreon. Wait, I don't think you were listening to B. To be, I appreciate what you're what you're uh, what you're talking about. I recognize uh, that tankies are supposedly like I know they don't exist IRL. I just listed about ten minutes ago what I think the concerns are. Now they annoy Trans me personally. For NB2. Thank you very much, and Jade Monkey, thank you so much for the gifted five tier one subs. Deeply appreciate that. Deeply appreciate that. Oh yeah, also that's another thing. Tankies uh, encourage people we to not vote. We all use a good mug from time to time. Which is like, what? 
What? Why would you encourage people to not vote? That is literally free. Oh, voting is... Okay, it's not literally free, but for a lot of people, for a lot of people, voting is free political change. And they do encourage people to not vote. They actually encourage people to not vote. I know some anarchists do too, but we're not talking about anarchists right now. So tankies, again, just for everyone, so that everybody understands what I'm saying, tankies are not an existential threat to the left. They're just... They do do damage, and they are annoying. And they do cause harm. They're not, again, it's not some sort of existential threat, but they do cause harm. Because the tankies have, are, are the ones who have been harassing Merrick for months. And that is bad. And guess what? The, the tankies, they, they go after people unbelievably harshly. Unbelievably harshly. So I'm sorry. But I think we should be done with them. I really do. I don't see what they're providing to any of us. They're certainly not helping me out. In fact, they only seem to make me mad and, and have to deal with a bunch of horrible um, genocide denial shit. Ha <laughs> ha, let's make jokes about people being killed all the time. Ha <laughs> ha, wall. Ha <laughs> ha, gulag. I'm so smart. I know how to put a... Oh, ooh, you want to know? Look, li oh my god, it's so fucking annoying. We all know to get to socialism, you have to genocide a few minorities. This is basic. You would understand this. This is... Lexi... Uh, Le Lexi, Lex, like, listen, listen. That's... I know you're... I know you're memeing about that. I had this exact conversation with Mel. When she came on, we had a good faith conversation and where I laid out my critiques of Marxism-Leninism. And, and I said, here's the problem that I have with Marxism-Leninism, which is that every single Marxist-Leninist group seems to have a problem where at the end of the day the leadership ends up being white guys sexist white guys who are often transphobic and because it's it, it, the power is centralized they have that power and nobody can take it from them and there is an issue with that happening and by the way i <laughs> that's just in the west okay well we live in the west so sorry but yes um, and, and the funny thing is that Mel couldn't even argue with me because I got that information. I got a lot of my insight onto ML groups from her. She talked openly about how like the, the Marxist Leninist groups in, in, in Canada were horrible to her ex and like to the degree that there was massive hate campaigns when she disagreed with the Marxist Leninist group in Canada. And it was like it ruined her ex's life, like horribly. And her ex was trans, publicly trans. And so it actually does turn out that that's kind of the way. And there was no answer, by the way. Mel had no answer for that. Yeah, there is one. I think it was called, I think it's, um, I'm trying to remember. It's on the West Coast. Hey, thank you so much, Jason Sanderson. Really appreciate that. Yeah, it's like a current one. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was the group that um, uh, Keffels, Keffels used to be a part of it. Keffels came on here and talked about it. No, not PSL. It was uh, Communist Party of Canada, I believe. Yeah, CPC, if I remember correctly. She didn't have a response for that. She said, oh, well, you know, you just have to make sure that those people don't come into power. But you can't because they already have the power. And, and at the end of the day, that is the, that is the thing. It's like, well, we just have to put aside the concerns of gay people so that we can get workers, worker freedom. And no, I won't do that. I won't do that. No, I am not going to die in a camp so that you can have state capitalism 25 years from now after a million gay people have died and lived in horrible agony. No, sorry, not happening. Not happening. So yeah, that's what I was referring to, Lexi. It's fucked. <sighs> Mel is not Canadian, no. Keffels is. Mel Mel and Keffels used to be in a relationship. I think Ke for the record, I know Keffels is a is an ML. And I like Keffels. I get along with Keffels. 
Keffels also has a lot of critiques of MLs, which is something that I find interesting. Oh, Keffels isn't an ML anymore? Well, there you go. There you have it. I got to talk to Keffels again soon. There should be a new conversation about organizational forms relating to the new kinds of, of work and production. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. Lexi, I couldn't agree with you more. Let's talk about that sort of stuff sometime. Because how the fuck does labor work? How does fuck does labor organizing work in an economy that's rushing towards automation and mostly has gig economy workers? Also, here's one last thing. I wanted to touch on this one last thing about this particular um, this particular issue. Um, which is, yeah, that's what I'm about to do, big boy. Um, which is, uh, Mel at the end was like, oh, you don't do real work. You, you, you know, um, Cephal? Keffel. Oh, Keffel. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, we'll have, I think we'll have another one. We've had one before, Jessica Metal, believe it or not. Hey, thank you so much, MP Asylum. Um, real quick. Uh, Yes. Last thing about the debate real quick. At the very end, uh, Mel said this whole thing about, oh, you need to get out and do some real organizing. Oh, you, you don't do anything. You're just an internet socialist. Guess what? Do you know what Mel does for socialism? Mel posts on Twitter, okay? Listen, I, I would love for anyone, and here's a challenge. Any of you who have a shred left of belief, of belief that Mel is some kind of power revolutionary secretly organizing the people find one piece of evidence of mel ever doing organizing you won't you won't i know you won't she doesn't do it she's not a part of any group she hasn't even read half the shit that she says she has mel is full of shit through and through okay and so are a lot of people all right and I know this is a big takedown, but let's be real. Mel is twice my size on Twitter. It's more than fair for me to criticize Mel. 100% more than fair. Plus, I knew Mel. And I tried to stop this particular outcome. I really did. I tried to have conversations with her in private. Didn't work at all. And since then... Since the time that I tried to talk to her in private, she has reignited a harassment campaign against someone who I consider a friend and a, and a professional associate like four or five times. She's doing it right now. Like as we speak. Oh, if Mel wants to come on and talk to talk about shit, like that's fine. If Mel wants to talk about it, she won't do it. She won't fucking do it. thinking about reading the Bible and the Quran. Do you think that non-religious people can get something out of reading the Bible? Absolutely, Will WP. You absolutely can. Especially if you have somebody, like if you study along with it. If you do like a secular study of the Bible, yes. I believe you can gain a lot, actually. And not only, but you'll also understand the sort of philosophical underpinnings of a lot of people in America. So yes, you can. Absolutely. Vermin says, it cracks me up when people say that because while, yes, Vosh does online stuff right now, he did a ton of organizing, grant writing, and community events in college. He helped run a week-long event on campus to further education around rehabilitative justice and volunteered at the local juvenile detention center and, and stuff like that. Yes, and here's the here's the great irony. The, the great irony of all of this is that Mel literally does less than Vosh in just about every way you can imagine agree this hey! is just, this is just dumb this is it i don't get wait the, this is chat, the, there's this the is meme exactly it's playing the same way. you can see it live there's this the meme the exact same reason base denim like people who are for um the death punishment the death penalty this is the exact same reasoning behind people who are for the death penalty where they're like well this person really deserved it and it's like no dude <laughs> no <laughs> no just don't like platform.
just if, if someone is unironically denying a genocide, don't platform them. True. All right, base denims, good shit. 